This is a brief lecture on Lewis acid base reactions and the process by which they make what we call coordinate covalent bonds. And we know it can be a little bit tricky um, predicting the product that will occur from a Lewis acid base reaction. And so I think this video will help you a bit. First of all, um, let's introduce what we mean by coordinate covalent bond. A coordinate covalent bond is a covalent bond, okay, so there are electrons that are shared between two atoms, but in a coordinate covalent bond, both of the electrons that make up the bond come from the same atom. Um, now, if you remember a regular covalent bond, each of the two bonding atoms contribute one electron. So, in a Lewis acid base reaction, coordinate covalent bonds are always formed. So, and it is the Lewis base, the electron pair contributor, that provides both electrons to make a new covalent bond with the Lewis acid. All right, so there are two types of products that can be made from a Lewis acid base reaction. They both start off as coordinate covalent bonds, but if the Lewis acid has an empty orbital, and we'll talk about what types of um, compounds have empty orbitals. So a boron compound would be example, uh, a good example of something with an empty orbital. So boron trifluoride only has six valence electrons. It has an empty p orbital. We'll show you pictures later. And it is because of that empty orbital, the Lewis base can directly form a bond with the boron. And so the product you get is what we call a complex between the Lewis acid and the Lewis base. And all you've done is make a new bond. You haven't broken any bonds. And that, that will happen if you have an empty orbital on the Lewis acid. So let's look at a case when that isn't true. It's very common that the hydrogen cation will also serve as a Lewis acid. These are also Bronsted-Lowry acid base reactions, right? And But we essentially never have the hydrogen ion by itself in nature. If we did, it would have an empty orbital. It's one and only orbital. Um, but it's almost always bonded to another um, atom. And so in that case, this hydrogen has no empty orbital. And so when it is attacked by a Lewis base, um, every new bond needs an orbital. So the orbital that hydrogen was using to bond to be part of water is now used um, to accommodate the new lone pair of electrons. So net result is when hydrogen ion is atta attacked, you make a new bond, in this case nitrogen-hydrogen bond, and you break the older bond that the hydrogen had. So I'm going to give you examples of both those types. I mentioned that boron um, is a good Lewis acid and that it has an empty p orbital. And so it makes, when it gets attacked by a Lewis base, it makes complexes, just makes new bonds. And the reason it has an empty orbital, I think you learned about hybridization. Um, when you only have three areas of electron density around a central atom, that is sp2 hybridized, which means there's a p orbital left over. So it is that p orbital that is empty in the boron atom. And that is the orbital that accepts the lone pair of electrons from the Lewis base, and it is the orbital that's used to make the new bond. Another really common Lewis acid are metal cations. And the example I'm giving here is the aluminum cation. And um, it can complex with a number of Lewis bases. I'm showing the complex that is formed in water. And 
Any metal cation is a Lewis acid simply. It's electron deficient. Anything with a positive charge can serve as a Lewis acid. And so if you look at the electron configuration, sometimes that helps you figure out if something has empty orbitals. If you look at the electron configuration for neutral aluminum, and then the common ion of aluminum has a plus three charge, which means it's lost three electrons. So aluminum cation, you can see, has empty 3s3p and 3d orbitals. Um, so it has several orbitals available to accept lone pairs of electrons and make new covalent bonds. And where it ends up being most stable is six water molecules um, form coordinate covalent bonds with the aluminum cation. So now let's look at the example, and by far and away, hydrogen is the most common example of this, <clears throat> where instead of simply making a complex and making one new bond, that's it, we're going to do a displacement. In other words, we're going to make a new bond and we are going to break an old bond. And again, hydrogen is the most common example of that. Again, hydrogen only has one orbital. Okay, it's, if you do its electron configuration, it's 1s1. It has an s orbital, and that is it. So every bond needs an orbital. So hydrogen can only make one bond. Okay, it already has a bond in water. It's already using its one orbital. And so when it makes a new bond, that one orbital that it has has to be transferred and used for the new bond, which means the other um, substance the hydrogen was bonded to gets kicked out or displaced. Another example would be HCl with water, okay? Similar type thing, a lone pair from water um, makes a coordinate covalent bond with the hydrogen atom, and the um, 1s orbital from this hydrogen atom uh, get shifted over to make this new coordinate covalent bond and thereby severing um, the original bond between hydrogen and chlorine. All right, so <clears throat> summarizing, how do you identify a Lewis acid and um, how do you predict whether it's going to just make one new bond or it's going to make and break a bond? So let's first talk about identifying Lewis acids. So the bottom line, Lewis acid must be able to accommodate a new electron pair, make a new bond, and the types of substances that can do that if they have less than eight valence electrons. So boron is a really good example of that. Beryllium is another good example of that. Uh, anything with less than an octet of electrons. Or... If it has an octet, but it has less than four regions of electron density, in other words, an sp3 hybrid compound cannot be a Lewis acid uh, because there, there are no empty orbitals to, to welcome the new lone pair of electrons. But if you have sp hybridized or sp2 hybridized, that means in the case of sp, you have two empty p orbitals in the case, well, not empty in all cases, but available. Um, and sp2, you have one p orbital left over. So they can serve as Lewis acids. And anything with a positive charge is electron deficient and can serve as a Lewis acid. All right, so here's just kind of showing the different types of Lewis acid and with the reasons why they're classified as a Lewis acid. Say, so aluminum is one of the compounds similar to boron, which uh, is pretty stable with only six valence electrons <clears throat> and an empty um, p orbital. So it's a good Lewis um, acid that can form a complex ion. Um, just make new bonds, in other words. The next two we're not going to spend any time on, but um, they were in the picture. <laughs> so um, so they there's no overall charge. They both have an octet of electrons. However, 
carbon dioxide has two regions of electron density around it, which makes it sp hybridized. And the sulfite ion um, has three regions of electron density, which makes it sp2 hybridized. And so both of those can act as Lewis acids. And again, I'm not going to say anything more than that. You'll see those in um, when we talk more about electrophiles and nucleophiles and in organic chemistry, you'll see this. Many um, metal cations, in particular transition metal cations, because they typically have um, nearby energetic, energy um, empty d orbitals, uh, often serve as Lewis acids. And they do have, usually have plenty of empty orbitals, um, so they make complexes, these complex ions, pretty easily. Um, and again, hydrogen ion is kind of off on its own, and because we don't see it in nature on its own, it's virtually always bonded to some other Lewis base. Um, so instead of making a complex when hydrogen ion is a Lewis acid, there's we have a situation where one Lewis base is attacking the hydrogen ion and kicking out or replacing or displacing <clears throat> another Lewis base. That's it. I hope that helps you do your Lewis acid base homework or understand Lewis acid bases a bit better.